Good morning, guys. It's another beautiful day at the small cabin in the woods. Today is all about raised bed garden. My take on raised bed garden. So I got a call. A gentleman I know is removing an oil furnace and he's got, with an oil furnace comes an oil drum. And with an oil drum comes raised bed gardens. Stay with me here. So the story of delicious carrots, succulent corn, beautiful potatoes starts here with an old oil drum. 900 liter or 200 gallon fuel oil tank. It's at the end of its life. Apparently the insurance companies don't want them after a certain age or when the thickness of the wall isn't adequate for their pain to get rid of for the homeowner. So the homeowners are glad to get rid of them. The other place you can look for them is scrapyards. Scrapyards generally aren't interested in taking them because of the stigma associated with fuel oil. Now, if, if fuel oil leaks on the ground, it's bad. And that's why insurance companies are reluctant to keep these oil, these older oil tanks in homes. Because if they were to leak, that would be bad. So ideally you can get a, you know, well-loved oil tank, one that doesn't have holes in it, and ideally one that's empty. So make sure it's empty. Or if it's not empty, I'm gonna show you how to deal with that too. Okay, let's get started cutting this guy up. Doesn't that sound cool? Start by finding the center of the drum. I know these guys are about 60 inches tall. So what I do is I mark the center. So if I'm gonna mark the center 30 inches. And then I go all the way around, marking a line. Okay, so now I've got my center point marked. I'm gonna drill a hole. But wait, but isn't it explosive? It's not gas, it's oil. It's equivalent of diesel fuel. Diesel fuel is flammable, it is not explosive. At least I hope, I'm pretty sure. If it is explosive, you're gonna get to see something really cool. I'm pretty sure it's not explosive. Oh, my battery. Well, that was unexpected. Apparently that was pressurized. I'm gonna cut around the middle of the drum with a sawzall. I'm basically doing it to illustrate that you can use a sawzall or you can use even more modern technology, which is the plasma. I'm gonna use a plasma cutter a little bit later, but I'm gonna use a sawzall for this. If you're anything like me and you buy sawzall blades and you're like, I usually use the tip of the blade and the tip of the blade gets dull and you're like, ah, oh, I don't really wanna throw this out. So you put them aside. This is the perfect opportunity to consume all of those sawzall blades that you have laying around because you're basically gonna cut with the very, very edge of the blade because you're gonna sink that blade right into the barrel and the sharp little bit that you never really get to when you're doing anything else, it becomes useful at this time. Okay, so now they're all set up to cut. Let's uh, fire up the generator and uh, get this show on a roll. Okay, so that, that went so bad. Let's take a look. Let's take a look inside the oil drum. This, this is possibly the cleanest oil drum I have ever seen. Uh, that gives us our, our basic shape of our raised bed garden. That's a K in it, look at that. This thing must be designed for me. It's the K, it's the K bin. So that's inside. There's a little bit, there's a little bit of fuel oil down there. Uh, and I'm going to show you next step as to how to clean that out. So you can see this side, this side's clean too. Some of them will not be this clean. There'll be sludge and whatnot. So, uh, on to the next step of 
making our organic gardens. What I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna take the old drum and I'm gonna fill it with uh, old scrap wood and uh, burn off the inside. I'm gonna give her a good fire. Hopefully that burns off any old oil, cleans it up nice and good. Is this the right thing to do? Mm. I haven't grown a fourth arm yet. <laughs> So now is the perfect opportunity to clean up your yard of every little stick you can find. The idea is the fire is going to clean that barrel out completely. There's going to be nothing left in there. It's just going to burn it down. It's going to basically clean everything. For those, for those of you that are concerned that I'm burning oil, and, and, and this is exactly what happens with an oil furnace. It actually, it burns it. it. That's what it does. It doesn't do anything different than what it's doing right now. This, Possibly it's cleaner because it's using wood and it's burning off all the hydrocarbons. So this is exactly, it's getting really hot. So this is exactly what happens when you have an oil furnace. Okay, so now we wait. While we wait, let's, uh, let's go see how the ducks are doing at the pond. Oh, hey little guys. How's everybody doing today? Let's see if we can, if they want to come out. You guys want to come out? Hey, you guys want to come out? Come on. Here. Ow, that's my finger. Ow. <laughs> ducks don't have teeth. Ow. I don't believe ducks don't have teeth. Look, I don't feed you. They're lying. I do feed them. But they look. Like... Hey, they're like little house. Hey, buddies. Quack. Getting a little older, they're starting to get darker feathers. Actual real feathers, so the down, the down I guess goes away, and then the, the real adult feathers come in. So you can kind of see them get a little, little browner. They seem to really enjoy the pond. They enjoy the water. I enjoy the water. Everybody enjoys the water. I like how they stuck their head. They stick their head under water, and then they, they kind of like they blow bubbles. It's kind of cool. If you guys didn't check the build on the uh, the floating duck house, you can check that out on this channel. It's uh, one of the previous videos, so you can see how we built this guy. Hey, Frankie, what's up? Are you scared of the ducks? Frankie's scared of the ducks. Frankie's only baby. What do you think, Lita? What do you think? I can't jump across that lake. What do you think? What do you think of the ducks? Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay, get some more. You got to give some more. There you go. Sprinkle it in front of them. There you go. What if I get some more on them? That's okay. They'll just shake it off. While Lena feeds the ducks, I think I'm gonna go back up to the upper level where its sun is shining and I'm gonna cut the bottom of that uh, raised bed garden out. I hear we're calling for rain again today, so I might as well get that done. Maybe fill it up with some dirt today. Get her all planted. That's pretty much cleaned out. I just got a little bit of coals and some ash left over. Let's get working on cutting out the bottom. We're ready to cut the bottom of the raised bed garden out and the reason to do so is because otherwise it's just a big bowl that the water will never drain out of it'll just fill up but you want the water to drain through you want the you know the worms to come up it's just it, it basically gets you up, up out of the ground it increases the soil temperature so stuff tends to grow better in uh, northern climates and we're gonna use a special tool now this is the business end of this tool this is a plasma cutter plasma cutter if you've never seen a plasma cutter, it's the coolest thing in the world. It's like kind of like having a lightsaber. This thing uses electricity, shorts out the metal, heats it up, and then there's a little bit of compressed air that comes out the tube and blows the slag away and allows you to cut any pattern you want. It's it's amazing. It's easy to use. It doesn't hurt like a sawzall does. A sawzall tends to be jarring. This thing is, yeah, this is, this is a really neat cool. It's a plasma cutter. Uh, they're a little bit pricey. They're a game changer when it comes to anything steel. It kind of like it changes the whole world of steel. Like steel used to be hard to cut. It used to like you know like you'd be grinding it and it'd be dirty. And again, it, it was like a welder, so you, you want to you know have good ventilation or wear a respirator when you're using it or use it outside. I don't recommend using it on flammable surfaces or like a, under a pine tree, like amongst pine needles. I don't recommend that.
You see that? That's that's the cutoff piece we just cut off. This is about three eighths of an inch thick and it cut it like it was butter. It's a couple of seconds and then it cut it right off. Yeah, that's hot. All right, so this is basically cheating, cheating for the metal world. This is the future of cutting. And what you're left with is a really cool shield. It's even got a handle on it. I guess you can go do some, was it LARPing? Yeah, really cool shield, the bottom of the thing. It's got a hand, target practice? I don't know. It's pretty cool. I'm gonna set that guy aside. I'm gonna demonstrate just how clean that metal is. So, everybody knows that if you put heat on metal, it doesn't do anything. If it was covered in oil, it would start to smoke. Let's, uh... You hear? You hear? Nothing. Hang on. Hang on, I got an idea. Okay, well, that's my test. And I hope that satisfies everybody out there that there is no oil left in the steel, in the drum. It's never gonna get into the ground. It's a perfectly viable solution to raised bed gardens that ain't gonna rot. Just to be added, sure, I'm gonna wipe the inside of it. These guys were destined for the landfill or the scrapyard or, or whatever, but it's, it's basically reusing something. So it's always better to reuse it before you end up recycling. It is organic, as in like, I'm not using pesticide on this thing because it's so easy to manage. You don't have to bend over to get the weeds. So you don't need to put pesticide on it to keep the pests out and the weeds out and herbicide and whatnot. So yeah, it's organic. Is it an old oil drum? Yeah, is that organic? It's easier to plant. When you start off in the springtime, you basically rake this thing out, put the rows out. You don't bend over, you don't bend down, you, do, you don't do anything of that. You guys can see how easy this is to manage. It's, it's, it's at like hip level, not hip level, thigh level, it's at thigh level. Aerate it, pull the roots out so like it you're not bending over anymore. While I wait for this tomato plant to grow, maybe I'll go to bed. I'll recheck it in the morning. Okay, guys, next day. Holy jeez, look at this thing. Look at the size of those tomatoes. Must have been the must have been all that tender loving care I took to make of that planter. So this is this is obviously the next, not the next day. I planted these in the spring. These are my tomatoes. As you can see, they're doing quite well. There's not a weed in there. I had to put a cage around them because they're so tall. They're like, they're above my head. They're gotta be like eight feet tall. Well, I guess the drum's 30 inches. This is the sort of success you can have with not the greatest soil, but you get it up off the ground. You increase soil temperature. You can weed it really easily. It's a win-win and you're keeping stuff out of the landfill, you're recycling it, you're reducing it, you're reusing it. Well, while I'm at it, I might as well give you a tour of all the other bins I have. I've been collecting these for a number of years. Every, every year, somebody has an oil drum for me and they ask me, do I want it? And of course I say, yes. I just keep adding to my raised bed gardens. Like I, you know, I kind of call it my tetanus garden because they do rust. I like that look. I like that little orange look to it. It's very compartmentalized. It's good for my brain. Have, I, know, I know the tomatoes are here. These are the beans. This is the, this is the bean container. These are, these are yellow beans. You can see that they're, they're doing quite well. And then that's it again in, a, in an oil drum. And over here is my corn. These were potatoes. Do you think there's any potatoes in there? Them you dug them all out. Yeah. There's no more tomatoes in there. To potatoes. You got a green bean to eat. What do you got your earmuffs on for? Oh, because I can't really go now. Oh, okay. We're just doing a tour. Okay. Lena's uh, helping herself to some green beans. So these, this is the pumpkin patch here. So as you can see, there's. They kind of spill out over the, th the side, but they've got some, they've got some pumpkins. 
There's another, if they spill over the side, I use um, a pipe, plastic pipe. It's like that foam pipe you insulate water pipes with. That prevents the, the thing from breaking. Yeah, I've got pumpkins. Pumpkins everywhere. Let's see what else I got. So we got the corn, got the beans. I think these are acorn squash. You can see, you can see the size of those guys. Like this is acorn squash. Again, in a, in a raised bed oil drum. There's another, there's another raised bed garden, an old bathtub. This is my favorite vegetable. So I, I, I dedicated the entire drum to just carrots. Let's see, let's see what they look like. Look at that. You want a carrot? There you go, buddy. Daddy. We gotta wash those. What are these, Lena? These, these are red tomatoes. Do they taste good? Yeah, you have, one. Have, have one. one. How about you try one? Well, is it good? Mmm. I mean, delicious. I'll pick a red You're one. You're gonna pick a red one? You get your little fingers in there? Want we try? Try it. Oh. It's good. It's good? Mmm. Mmm, delicious. Hey, yeah, look, there's a weed. There's a weed amongst my... See, I just pull it out. There you go. Did you get it, Lena? Pull it out. There you go. That was easy. Is that easy, Lena? It's all about raised bed gardens the modern way.